talk off the cuff, but he gave me a little intro speech here, so I'm going to do it uh, off, off my phone. My phone doesn't die. Anyway, our guest speaker today is Mr. Chuck Douglas. Chuck is a National Junior Olympic Cross Country Champion, Masters Track and Field Olympian for Team USA, Military Veteran of the United States Navy, yay, go Navy, um, and a graduate of Georgia State University in Atlanta. Chuck has delivered over 6,000 speeches and training programs throughout the world, including some people you may know here, Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy, Tony Robbins, Bob Proctor, and Les Brown, and John Maxwell. Chuck is here today to share some ideas designed to create immediate and lasting results for your personal and professional effectiveness, as well as the opportunity to attend a very special event that he calls Building Your Business Legacy with Clients for Life. So, please join me in a warm welcome for our guest speaker, Mr. Chuck Douglas. Hi. Awesome. Thank you. How's everybody doing today? Let me see if I've got this right. We've got George, Andrew, Renee, Ali, Mo, Sean, where's uh, Mark, Sean, Elium, right? We've got Rita. Is that right, Elium? Liam. Forgive me. Forgive me. Okay, we've got Rita, Andrea, right? We've got Randy, Kenny, Kathy, Sylvia's guest. Bob. Who? Bob. Bob. Spelled the same way both ways? Yes. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Sylvia. We've got Edison, Charles, Lee, and Dave. How did I do? Excellent. So that's from a book called How to Win Friends and... Yeah, Mr. Dale Carnegie, and I think it's really important. We'll talk about it a little later on today. First things first, though. How many of you want to... Make more money, do more deals, and have more fun while you do it. Put show of hands. Okay, how many of you want to walk out of here today better looking than you were when you walked in? Show of hands. Oh, man, some of you should have raised your hand. No. Can't help you with the second. I can definitely help you with the first, though. Uh, one of the things that Zig Ziglar taught me when I trained with him for the first part of my career was he said, pretend every speech is your last. What's the benefit of that? It forces you to do your very what? Best. Your very best when you're out there. So I give every speech as if it's my last speech, forcing me to give my very what? Best. My very best. Right. Second thing he said, start out with something fun. Because he said there may not be, everybody in the room may not be fun. He said there may be some people in the room going, this better be good, Chuck. Anybody like that in the room today? A couple of you, all right. He said, so start out with something fun. So we're going to have a little fun today. Is that okay? A little fun today, all right? Not a lot of rah rah, just a little bit. Please repeat after me. I will make. I will make. 2018. 2018. My best year ever. My best year ever. Now look to at least two people with some enthusiasm in your eyes, and tell them you are an amazing human being. Go. <laughs> all right, good job, everybody. Good job. That is all the motivation you are getting today. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for coming. <laughs> there are some note sheets here. Everybody should have, uh, they're all on this table, as a matter of fact. Uh, so if we could take these two piles and disperse them, one of these and one of these, okay? Right for now. That's all you need. So if we could, uh, everybody on the table can have this those two piles and then we can disseminate those to the rest of the group. That would be awesome. Here's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you, you how to begin building your biggest, your business legacy with clients for life. These are the habits. And by the way, what is a habit? It's something you do without even what? Thinking about it. How many of you got up this morning and got dressed? Show hands. Right. And you did it without even thinking about it. Top real estate investors, they are always looking for deals and they don't have the what? Think about it because it is a what? It is a habit. Okay, this is really, really important. So these are the habits of people that earn over two hundred thousand dollars a year, top two percent of income earners in the United States of America. I'm going to help you by giving you five ideas very quickly today. We're going to roll through a warp drive. We're going to do forty miles an hour with gusts up to about a hundred. So buckle up today, and we're going to go five ideas. I want you to rate yourself. You can turn that white sheet over and you can do it on the back of the white sheet, but I want you to rate yourself, okay? Here's your scale. One to ten. One is pathetic and ten is perfect. So give yourself a rating after each 
skill set, right, or after each habit that I give you today, in accordance with the one to ten scale. Let's dive right in. Number one is this. Jot this down. You need to have firmly established why you are in this business. Why? When I was 17 years old, I was in Memphis, Tennessee. My mom was the VP of HR globally for Federal Express. And we lived in a little town called Germantown, Tennessee. I graduated Germantown High School uh, in 19... <clears throat> anyway. Um, we were out doing some things... Okay, thank you, Renee. We were out doing some things that we shouldn't have been doing. I was in a 1975 Dodge Challenger with a 500cc street illegal engine with 60s on the back, slicks. Well, jamming, right, Mo? You, you, you know what that car is, wish, right? Don't you wish you had that now, huh? Oh, baby. <laughs> Maybe not today. Uh, <laughs> But I'll tell you what, this car was a beast. I was out showing off three friends in the car. Took a left off Poplar, down a hill, and a quick right turn. It had just rained. I didn't really, it didn't really, I wasn't really cognizant of the fact that it was still a little slick, right? So I gunned it down the hill to show off, tried to make the right turn, and I flipped it. Hit a fire hydrant, rolled four times, landed in a little grassy field between the neighborhoods, upside down. Trapped under the steering wheel. My three friends got out. I was trapped. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you had no control, uh, where you were trying to do something physically and you couldn't do it as hard as you could, couldn't get out, couldn't budget. The last thing I heard before I passed out was this. Somebody get him out of there. There's gas leaking. The car is going to blow. And I still get goosebumps even telling you the story right now. Fortunately for me, an off-duty firefighter had driven by, saw the commotion, and came over and I don't know what this guy was, but he was a beast. He ripped that door off somehow, pulled me out, and the car exploded about two minutes later. So I'm here today with a pretty, that's where the seed was planted for me, for my why, to help other people to do what I do here today. You need a why, a strong why. Maybe it's money, maybe it's family, maybe it's your children, maybe it's something else. You've been through a divorce, it's your, you know, your, your heart attack, whatever, you're gonna get back in the game. You need a why in order to be successful and have continuous motivation. Because motivation only lasts for a short time. Would you agree with that? Yes. Right? Motivation is like a really good shower. Doesn't last very long, but you better what? You better take one every day. Okay? Really important. So get your why. I want you to jot this down. Three things that you need with this number one. And I'm going to entitle it number one. Be a beach ball. Just jot that down. I want you to be a beach ball. Okay? A beach ball is hard to get under. And it doesn't stay underwater very long. It pops back up right away. You need to be a beach ball because negativity will come in this business. Is that true? You're gonna if it's a fifty to one ratio for making offers, there's gonna be some negativity, right, Dave? You're gonna have to be resilient. You're gonna have to be a what? And to be a beach ball, you need to have a why. So number one, be a beach ball. A, get your why straight. Why are you doing this? B, make sure you set goals and write them down. Print. Print defines the truth. If you don't write it down, it's not truth for you. You've got to write your goals down somewhere. 90-day goals and yearly goals. So, A, get your why in your heart of hearts. B, make sure you have goals written. 90 days and a year. And C, make sure you reward yourself upon achievement of those goals. Because here's the key phrase, gang. What gets rewarded gets what, Lee? <laughs> what gets rewarded gets repeated. If, if Rita has 20 deals right now, it, 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 then, and she's, she knows how to do it, and she knows the steps, and it's automatic for her, and it's autopilot for her, the more she rewards herself for achieving those goals along that way, the more those deals are going to what? They're going to repeat and show up and increase. Okay? So you've got to have something to reward yourself with. I'm a guitar player, so I like to play. I was in a, a group for about eight years when I was younger. We traveled around professionally, and I was a lead guitarist, right? Now I use it as a reward at the end of the day. If I hit my daily goals, and guess what I get to do? I get to play my guitar. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, jam out. No more Marshall Stack and Gibson Les Paul. But I, I go the acoustic route now. Anyway, any guitarists in the room besides me? Anybody play? Yeah, what, 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 acoustic? Both? Yeah, well, what's your acoustic? What, what, what's the brand name? Nice, yeah, great, great electric guitars, yeah, or acoustic guitars as well. So, number one, be a beach ball. Give yourself a rating. Are you a beach ball? 
Or do you let things drag you down, keep you down, and you never pop back up again? What's your MO? No pun intended, Mom. That's okay. okay. I love that. <laughs> keep going. The joke. Number two. Number two. You have to be able, as Dale Carnegie said, because when you meet somebody, the most and the sweetest sound to their ear is the sound of their own what? And Dale Carnegie said, if you can remember somebody's name, if you can learn to do this effectively, right, you can increase your income, double it within six months. But so many people don't remember names, right? What if I ask you what my name was? Renee, what's my name? Chuck. Give a round of applause. Don't want to press her, baby. <laughs> but usually it's shaking the hand, the hand comes apart, and the name's bye-bye. Agreed? Right? And I used to use an old trick. Somebody said, oh, if you, if you meet somebody who forgot their name, just ask them how to spell it. Well, I made that mistake with Bob one time. And I said, how do you spell your name? He said, it's Bob. It's B-O-B. -B. <laughs> Probably won't use that again, right? So I want to learn how to actually remember the name. So I'm going to give you a couple of tips. Because remembering names can take your business. You guys deal with a lot of different types of individuals during the day. Would that be true? You know, from, from, from people in the funding arena, uh, you know, your bird dogging out here, you know, whatever you're doing to put deals together, rehabbing properties, whatever it is, you're dealing with different genres uh, and, and personalities. And if you don't remember their names, you are not going to get them to influence them to do the things that you want them to do. And that is the goal, is it not? To get them to influence them to, toward a win win situation. So, I'm going to give you three tips for remembering names. Jot these down. This is number two. How to remember names, okay? One was be a beach ball. Two, remembering names. Okay. Anything else? By the way, how many of you have forgotten a name recently? Show of hands. Okay. Anybody? Okay, those of you without your hands up have a problem with lying, don't you? Okay. It's easy to forget a name. Let me give you three tips in order to be able to remember. A, jot this down. Be the initiator. If I'm over here with Kathy and I say, hi, I'm Chuck. You are, she's like, let me write first, Chuck. Hi, I'm Chuck, you are? Kathy. Now watch this. Kathy? Nice to meet you, Kathy. How many times did I just use Kathy's name? George says three. Andrea says three. Is it Allie? Ellie. Ellie, how many did you hear back there? Like two? Anybody? Renee, what did you hear? You heard three? Let's try it one more time. You ready? Watch this. Okay. Hi, I'm Chuck, you are? Kenny. And, uh, Kenny? Nice to meet you, Kenny. How many times did I use Kenny's name? Twice. Twice, okay. Why did I go Kenny? Why the upward intonation? To verify that I actually heard his name correctly. I don't want to call him Carl or Candy. No, I wouldn't call him Candy. But <laughs> I want to call him by Anybody ever had their name uh, abused before? Andrea. Andrea. Does it matter to you if it's Andrea? Yeah, you know, I had to give up that battle. There's, yeah. no, <laughs> it's like, there's no way, man. I know, right? <laughs> Rita, have you, have you ever had your name misused? My last name all the time. Yeah, so this is the thing. You've got to check it out. So A, be the initiator. Be the one that walks up. B, make sure that you have upward intonation. In other words, you know, hi, I'm Chuck. You are? Charles. Okay, he said his name once. I go, Charles? Charles. He said, Charles. I said, nice to meet you. Charles. Charles, hand comes apart. Repeat the name at least twice, but no more than five times in the first couple of minutes. And you won't forget it for 30 days straight. It's an amazing tool, right? But most people don't do it. So A, be the initiator. B, use upward what for verification? Upward intonation. And C, use the name at least twice. Don't use it any more than five times, because if I walk up to Randy and say, hey, Randy, nice to meet you. Randy, how's business? Randy, 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 Randy. <laughs> You know, it's going to be a little, it's going to make me look not like a professional, okay? So, uh, number two, how to remember names, three tips for you. Number three, number three, you need to have a sense of humor in this business. How many of you have met somebody who does not have a sense of humor lately? Have you? Um, describe them, Bob. What are they like? Boring. Would you call them a pucker butt? Well, I don't understand the definition. You guys heard that word before? Pucker butt. Real. They just pucker right up, boy. They just, you know, I was in New York and I saw a lady in an elevator, beautiful jacket on. I mean, stunning, right? And I said, that, that is a gorgeous jacket. She said, well, it's not a jacket, it's a coat. Okay, it's a coat. Dude. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, seriously, right? I mean, you know, stay in bed. 
but attitude is important, and it's really having a sense of humor. Can can humor be good for your business? Yes. yes. How, what what does it do? It makes the person relax. It lightens the mood, doesn't yeah. it? Right? Yeah. Come on! If you take yourself too seriously, nobody's going to connect with you. You know, you, you know if, if if somebody calls me Doug Chuckless instead of Chuck Douglas, they get my name wrong, right? I can't take it too serious. Well, you didn't get my. I'm an important person. You better get my name right. Whoa, dude! Come on, get out of yourself. Get over yourself. Agreed? Because humor makes you connect with other people. Rapport, connection. A little money, a lot of money. Rapport is when you have something in common. Connection is when people get that you care. Okay. This is the key. Humor does that. Okay. So I'm going to test your humor right now and see how it is. Please repeat after me. I will never take advice, I will never never take advice. advice. from anyone more messed up than I am. More more messed up than I am. I am. Okay. A little humor. Give yourself a rating on humor. If you're having trouble with your humor, just make sure you sit in your living room, have your kids and your family make fun of you for about an hour, you'll be fine. Okay? Number three, a sense of humor. Number four, make sure you always ask for referrals. Now, let me give you a distinction. Edison, please give me a 10-minute warning on my time, if you would, please. Uh, make sure you have a distinction between affluent clients and non-affluent clients. Affluent clients, investable income above 250000 typically defined. Um, I don't know, Randy, when you were in the business, uh, you were probably after affluent clients as well, right? You wanted to find and maintain those. I do a, yeah. I, I'm one of the speakers at the upcoming event. By the way, have you guys enjoyed me so far? Yeah. You guys like it so far? Got a couple yeah. Of good? Yeah. How many of you got at least one good idea so far? Let me see a show of hands. Okay, very good. So finding and maintaining affluent clients is really, really, really important. Asking them for referrals, though, doesn't work in the same manner it works with non-affluent clients, okay? I'm going to give you the non-affluent client methodology, then I'm going to give you the affluent client methodology very quickly, okay? Um, by the way, pull out your cell phones real quick. I want to give you my business card, so pull out, pull out your cell phones, if you would, please, okay? And I want you to text, and I'm going to have a, uh, we're going to have a little contest, okay? Out of everyone that does this, you'll get my business card back. You don't have to opt into any emails or programs or any jazz unless you want to, okay? But here's the deal. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to select two winners from all the texts that come in. The first winner is going to receive my CD package called How to Close the Deal and Handle Objections Like a Pro. I've got a CD. The second individual is going to get a Les Brown CD package entitled Four Stages to Greatness. Okay? So we're going to do both those. I'll have to go ahead and we'll determine the winner tomorrow, so I'll make sure Dave or Edison gets the prize for you. And I also have a door prize, which is a book today for, for one of you as well. So get your text out. I want you to text to the number 40691. 40691. You'll put that in place of the person's name. And then go down in the body of the text where you would type in your text to that person and type in my name, Chuck. Not cap sensitive, don't worry about it. C-H-U-C-K. You'll get something back. It'll be an electronic business card with my videos and all that good jazz. At the bottom of the page, when it pulls up, just hit not now and it goes straight to my card. If you want to skip all the sign in, log in, all that jazz, just press not now. All right? So you'll have my business card. We'll have a little fun with the contest. Now, referral technology is really key. So when you're with someone, you want to ask them what kind of a question for referrals, open or closed-ended? Open. 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 Why not closed? Give me an example of a closed-ended question. Closed-ended question is yes or? or no. no. Right, so, so you, you pigeonhole people. So here, let me give you a great question that's open-ended, okay? Now, I really appreciate it. Mark, you're, uh, you're a great connector, I can tell, right? So somebody you want to know over there. So Mark, I really appreciate, uh, you know, let's say we've worked together a little bit, you know, done some deals. I've, I've flipped, uh, you know, given you some business, uh, some fundings, and, and you, you know, given me some speeches or whatever, and we've gone back and forth. And I say, hey, Mark, um, Really appreciate what you've done for me, man. Uh, just a quick question for you. Have you enjoyed uh, you know, what, what we've provided for you and the service that we've uh, given you? And Mark says, yeah, Chuck, yeah, we, we appreciate it. We really had a good, you know, good relationship together. Here's, here's how I would, I would frame it like that. And I'd say, as you know, referrals are the what? 
I got him tongue. Drug addict. <laughs> the lifeblood of our business. So quick question for you. Here's the open-ended question that you want to use with non-affluent clients. Who comes to who comes to mind that could benefit from what we've done for you? Simple sign, right? Really appreciate what we've done. Have you enjoyed our service? Hey, quick question for you. As you know, uh, you know, uh, referrals are the lifeblood of our business and organization, Andrew. Just a quick question for you. Who comes to that could benefit from what we've done for you? Okay? With non-affluent clients, that works well. But with affluent clients, they have a sphere of influence that is much different than the sphere of influence of other, of other folks, okay? So it's really important that you don't pigeonhole them like that. You need to use a personal introduction strategy. Jot that down. This is something that I teach in the event. It's called a personal introduction strategy. I don't have the time at my, at my command today to unroll, to roll that out to you and unpack that, but I will just tell you, it's all about personal introductions and you giving before you ask for something, okay? So number four, number four is what? Asking for referrals. All right, we're on our last, our last idea today. Number one was what? Let's review and make sure you guys have taken notes. Number one was what? Be a beach ball, ABC. Two was how to remember? And number three was what? Sense of? Sense of humor. Number four was? Referrals, affluent and non-affluent. Number five is this. You must practice two words called self-development. When I went through the Navy SEALs, I, I didn't make it all the way through. Uh, I was I had a detached retina, my eye during the during the first phase of the bud, and I just I didn't make it. I was a nuclear power technician. I was aboard the USS Richard E. Byrd EDG 23 after the sub training, and I spent my six years got out. Um, but during that period of time, I realized that if you've ever heard, how many of you have heard the speech by um, uh, by the Navy SEAL called "Make Your Bed"? Anybody heard that before? called Make Your Bed. It, it, it goes, you've heard that before, Dave? Pretty impressive speech, wasn't it? It's, it talks about when your day starts, you know, what you do first thing in the morning sets you up for the rest of the day. Some people don't do that. Some people go to their cell phone right away. I don't touch my cell phone in the morning for an hour because I want to show my brain who's boss. Okay, I, I, you know, I mean, unless there's something super duper critical. But, but the first hour, you need to train yourself to develop yourself. What are the most two most important hours of the day for your performance? First hour and the, because you're planning the next day, you're making sure you're ready for the next day. So, self-development is the title of the last idea. Circle the word self. You gotta invest in yourself. I had a guy last week, he said, oh, I don't have the money to invest in myself. I said, dude, that's why you need to do it. You don't wanna be in a position where you can't afford a few hundred bucks. Why go through life like that? I read an article in Barron's Magazine that says that 79% of Americans woke up today living paycheck to what? I don't think they like it. I don't think they wake up in the morning and go, woo -hoo -hoo, baby, what a great day to be broke. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. And I can't wait to not have any money to pay my bills and struggle and juggle all around. Man, this is so good, isn't it? No, they don't do that. They're good people, but with bad habits. So let's give you some good habits in that area today. Jot this down. The number 444. 444. George, is this mine? Just your Okay, very good. 444. Here's what it means. First four, leaders are readers, folks. You better be reading four books a year minimum. How many of you have read at least four books in the past 12 months? Completely through, show of hands. 50 Shades of Grey doesn't count. <coughs> you, you did, okay, everybody does? Okay, good. If you, if leaders are readers, new ideas, keeping up, sharpening up, your vocabulary, all this is so important. Second four, you must maintain four audios a year. Repetition is the mother of skill. When I was with Tony Robbins, he had uh, personal power courses and unlimited power and unleash the power and power, 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 power. You know, and I would I would listen to them the first time, come back another week later, listen to them again, and I'd be like, where'd that come from? Because that's what it, that's what's happening. You're a different person the second time you go back through it. You're better. You're improved. Your axe is getting sharp. But if your axe isn't sharp, you'll walk around out here today. You may meet somebody that could be a deal or an investor for you, but you're not prepared. Am I making sense today? Right? I mean, listen, you've got to have that interactive ability to be sharp and conversational with people. It's really important for audience. Thirdly, you must attend four workshops, seminars, whatever you want to call them. 
because networking is key. Go to Edison's workshop. Go to the, 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 the land trust and, the, and, and the, the lease options workshop with Charles. Do, do, it, do as much as you can. I hope you come to ours. If you don't come to ours, go to something. Don't sit around and go, oh, I can't, I'm not that kind of person, I can't afford. Don't do that to yourself. Because what you do is you set yourself up for scarcity rather than abundance, and your brain says, well, we can't afford it, well, we can't afford it, we can't afford it. Well, and what happens? Does that affect your mentality, yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? You ever see the guy go, oh, how come I can never get a date? What does your brain say? Because you are a loser. <laughs> It just searches the loser file, and it brings everything bad to mind. Don't do that. Ask yourself empowering questions. Let me give you a little tip, too, with technology. Jot this down. Before you meet with people, research them on Facebook. If you've got their mobile number, plug it into the search bar. Their profile will pop up 80% of the time. If the mobile number doesn't work or the phone number doesn't work, put their email in there. If you're not researching people before you meet them, you are driving blind, okay? If you don't know the DISC profile, like what we're going to teach at the event, or moving forward, moving away, meta program strategies, if you don't know this stuff, you're operating at a very low level of negotiation and sales and business mastery. You've got to get some information, sharpen your axe up, and get trained. Three fours, four, four, four. For what? For? And for? For classes, workshops, or seminars. All right, real quick. Give yourself a rating one to ten for all of those. One's pathetic. 10 is perfect. How are you doing? Be honest with yourself. Okay? How many of you got at least one good idea? Good show of hands today from this session. How many of you got at least one good idea? What was it? Um, you got two, Edison? What, what, what did you like the most? What was your favorite idea today? I would uh, introduce myself to someone, you know, get their name a couple of times. Yep. Get their name a couple of times. Yeah. Hi, I'm Chuck. You are? Sylvia, and you are? Oh, ooh. and the student become the master. <laughs> What'd you get today, Sylvia, that you really enjoyed? A sense of humor. I need to have a sense of humor. That's a, I'm a very serious type of person, but I want to develop a sense of humor. I like what you said about having a sense of humor to have some get a business in. It's so important, isn't it? Don't yeah. take yourself to what, guys? Seriously. Listen, that's the start. You know, other than that, you know, somebody says something to you that normally would upset you, don't be upset. Laugh it off. You know, make fun of yourself. This is the key. Okay? Somebody else, what did you get that you enjoyed today? Yeah, Mark, what did you get, brother, that you enjoyed? I would say the same thing because I'm terrible at remembering names. You used to be terrible. As of today, you are what? I'm better. You're amazing. I'm better What's my name? Chuck. Oh, dude, give him a round of applause. Brother Chuck. Chuck. Yeah, Chuck, Chuck Marcho. All right, guys, if you got a good idea from me here today, I was only here for 30 minutes. I talked really fast. Imagine. If you could get one idea in a short time here, what we could give you with not only myself teaching about finding and maintaining affluent clients as one of the guest speakers at the event, but also guys like Omar Perry, you real estate investor. Our Monto, Armando Montalago uh, is going to be there with a special guest appearance, 100%. Eric Stoller, 25-year veteran in managing dynamics of multi-million dollar businesses. Uh, Oscar Arias, this guy is a genius, PhD in communication and organizational development and behavior sciences. I mean, this is, a, th th this is a wealth of wisdom that you cannot afford to miss. So I've been asked to give all of you just a very quick invitation to join us at this event. So if you could please grab your flyer, if you would, right here. And also there is one other sheet I want you to grab. Um, I'm gonna pass these around the room. Just take one, George, and pass that around, if you would please. Grab the flyer. I'm going to make some corrections on the flyer. The flyer is, says April 26th. That is, in fact, correct. Okay? Uh, the flyer, April 26th, is correct. It's going to be at the Wyndham in Deerfield. Okay, the Deerfield Wyndham. Okay, so make that correction. 9 to 5, and networking is from 8 to 5. Excuse me, 8 to 9, forgive me. Be there early, network with people. And what's, what, what was the first part of memory? What was A on the, mem on, on the memory? No, A. Initiate. Initiate. You know, come in here today like you saw me when I walked in here. You know, Renee was the first one. I walked up after I almost ran her over when she opened her car door. Um, I walked up and said, hey, I'm Chuck. You are? I was the initiator. Okay? Be, this breeds confidence, all right? So let me give you an overview of the event. It's going to be all day. It's going to be how to build your business legacy. For you as real estate investors, Omar is going to spend some time on that as well as Armando. And also on sales mastery negotiation, I'll be talking about affluent clients, 
Again, if you like me then, you'll get me, uh, or like me now, you'll get me then as well for uh, about 45 minutes on that day. Okay? There are two levels of investment for this program. Okay? If you'd like to sit up front with your table, be part of the VIP section, meet with the speakers at the end of the day for a dinner, it's totally on us, at a mastermind table, there'll be, there'll be 15 people at the table. Okay, we, we just started well, we just started promoting this, so we've got 10 seats left at the table for the VIPs. This includes a full list of bonuses, including how to handle objections, how to close the deal. It includes uh, an hour coaching session with me, an hour coaching session on the telephone with me, and it's serious. It's high content coaching. It also includes uh, Les Brown's uh, whole entire tape set called uh, Four Stages to Greatness, which we're going to give one away for free, and the book. And it also includes a speaker training for free. It's a, it's, a, it's a $1,500 course, and it's absolutely complimentary. This is all part of the VIP, the VIP seating. Jot this down. The investment's $997. $997. That is about 3 bucks a day. No, it's less than $3 a day. Okay? The other ticket is general admission. And I know some of you are VIPs. Some people, the reason we have this ticket is because we know that some of you just you know, don't want to settle for anything less than a VIP. So if that's you here today, uh, that, that's the investment and that's the program for the VIPs. The other ticket, jot this down, is a general admission ticket. Okay? It's $697 and we're going to give you a little bonus on it here in just a few minutes. Now, um, I was encouraged to give a free ticket away today. So if, if I'm going to give a free ticket, if I did that, um, if I gave a free uh, VIP ticket away today to one person in the room and you won the ticket, how many of you would take it, use it, and go? Let me see a show of hands. How many of you would do that? Now, see, that's really disappointing because every hand's not up. Why, why, why would every hand not be up if you, to go to a program where you're going to get something that's going to help you in your life? I don't know. Anyway, uh, if, if you're here today and you would go, what does that tell me about you if I would give you a free ticket? It tells me what? You like free stuff. <laughs> yeah. It also tells me you want to grow, and time is not the issue. You can find the time, okay? Make time for personal development. I understand, you know, maybe something else besides that. But the only other objection here today that I'll probably get or might come up is money. Everybody's, you know, some people are always so quick to go, I don't have the money. You know, again, let me reiterate, if you, don't, if you can't afford a dollar a day to go and improve yourself, you better, change, you better change something in your life because you don't want to be there for a while. So what we're going to do today is this. And, and by the way, I'll bet if I check with Dave and said, Dave, who do I give that ticket to today? He'd say probably to the worst investor in the room. Who's the worst investor in the room? No, I'm kidding. That's a, that's a, that's a, I didn't mean that. No, I'm kidding. But if I did give a free ticket away, you probably wouldn't use it anyway because I understand uh, a few months ago there were some free tickets given away and only two people came out of 15 that were given. So free stuff doesn't really work. You invest in your hard-earned money and, and, and getting some value from something that you put your sweat equity in, that works. Would you agree? This is what it's all about. So what we're going to do today, if you'd like to come to the VIP, you got that. If you want to come to the general admission, jot this down, cross out the 697 and put 297. Very simply, we're going to do that for those of you who enrolled today. All the bonuses are the same, except for you know the VIP seating in the front area and the dinner and all that jazz. But you get all the CDs, you get the books, you get the coaching session. All that stuff comes with the 297 package. How many of you would say that you not only enjoyed the, our time together, you got something that helped you, but you're thinking about coming to the event on the 26th? Let me see you show hands. How many of you? Keep, keep going for it. One, two, one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine. Why, uh, Kenny, why are you thinking about coming? Just out of curiosity. I got a yearning for learning. I like that. Can I use that? Al, I used your penny illustration though, uh, earlier in the week. Do I need to give you credit for it again? Nope. <laughs> um, Renee, you had your hand up. Why are you thinking about coming? Uh, I think it's good okay. content that yeah. I could definitely use. Awesome. Appreciate that very much. Andrew, what are you thinking about coming? Yeah, and meeting some people too, right? Meeting some powerful people. These will be people that invest in themselves, like you, right? And Zig Ziglar said, the mind's like a parachute. It will only work if it is what? Open your parachute up. Come on. Get some, get, you know, get, get some learning. Sharpen up that act. So, again, those of you who want to come, I'm going to end with this right here today. 
I'm going to be here for about 30 minutes before I have to leave. So uh, those of you that have, here's your form. Take these out if you will. Those of you that don't have these, this, this table, they're right here, but I'm going to grab one. Just go ahead. This is the form that you fill out. Your credit card is the easiest way to do it. Pop your credit card number down there. I'll take a picture of it. You keep the form, and we'll go from there. Uh, those of you with the VIPs, I have all your bonuses and goodies for you. With that, we'll schedule our coaching sessions in the next 24 hours, okay? So these are the forms that you need to fill out. If you need a little help, you want a credit card, you know, in a couple of days, you've got to do it, not today, or you need a week, post a check, see me one-on-one -on -one with anything special, and maybe I can help you with that as well. Okay, everybody stand up with me real quick as we finish today. Stand up with me. We're going to have a little fun, all right? God, I need your help here today. Rub your hands together like this. We're going to pray for new deals. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to repeat something. It goes like this. If, it, if it's going to be, it's... All right, repeat after me. If it's gonna be, if it's gonna be, if it's gonna be, okay, you guys say it all at one time. Ready? One, two, three. All right, give yourselves a round of applause. Those of you that want to come, I'm gonna be here for about 30 minutes. Make sure you get those forms filled out if you have any questions. By the way, um, referrals are really key for us. So those of you here today, maybe you're part of a company that has 20, 30 people, at least 10, I could come out and do a complimentary workshop.